Hi, I'm Dan Tokar with the Willow Forge in Shepherdstown, West Virginia, and I'm going to continue uh, Blacksmith's Dictionary, because part of what you need to learn before you can do anything in the fire is what things are called and what they do. Otherwise, how will you know what I'm talking about when I tell you about things? Anyway, we'll start off with some pretty straightforward things. This is a hot cut. This is a, a chisel that is mounted with a handle with a thin blade so that you can cut hot metal with it. Now, the fatter versions with the thicker blades mounted like that are for cutting cold metal. You do occasionally have to cut cold metal. So, thick fat ones are for cold metal. Now, you also have things for making holes. So, that's a square punch. That's for punching a square hole in metal. And that's different from a square drift, because a drift is designed to take a drilled or a round punched hole and size it or make it uh, a particular shape. So if you want to have exactly a half inch hole, you don't punch a half inch hole. You punch a hole that's a tiny bit smaller, and then you use a drift that's the right size so that when the metal shrinks, it will give you a hole that's that size. Sometimes it doesn't matter. There's an old saying that blacksmiths don't work to dimensions, they work to snug. And if you're doing some things like mortise and tenon work, it's possible to not even know what the dimension is. You have a, a, a nominal dimension and you just kind of make everything fit up tight and uh, that's good enough. You don't actually have to know the dimension. But drifts are so you can make a hole uh, that's the correct size and shape dimensionally, as opposed to just punching a hole. Then you have swages. Uh, anything that has a negative shape so that you can make a positive when you hold this and hit it, because you're hitting this with another hammer. You're not swinging this like a hammer. You're holding this and either hitting it with your hammer or your helper is striking with a sledgehammer. So you have this shape, which is then transferred to the work. So if you need to have a particular radius, either on the end of a bar or if you're smoothing a shaft by having it in a mating uh, swage block, a, a big cast iron block that has the same radius, this is a swage. Now, a fuller, is the opposite. It is convex on the outside and it's for making impressions that are round or for making a radius in a flat uh, bar or for delineating the steps on something. Like you'll sometimes see something like a hammer and you'll see this step that's in the hammer. Well, a fuller is the tool that can make that shape. They'll sometimes be used for breaking the corner. So you have a, a square bar that's going to be your hammer. So you have this transition from where it's square to where it goes to octagon. Well, a fuller is a neat way to do that so you can put it exactly in the right place and then forge out the flats. And you can have fullers and swages that are of mating radiuses. So if you see how that works, uh, it's possible to make a positive and negative that actually end up kind of making a knuckle joint by using the matching swage and fuller to make the mating pieces. Now, I should go back to hammers. Most blacksmiths forge with a cross peen hammer. The peen is this narrow part on the end. Okay. And a cross peen means that the peen goes side to side. A straight peen hammer has the peen going parallel to the handle. A ball peen hammer has a ball on one end instead of a straight or uh, cross peen. So that's why these are ball peen hammers. Now, you'll see things that some people think are hammers, and they kind of are. This is what's called a set hammer, but you don't swing it like a hammer. It's called a set hammer because you set it on the work, and you strike it with either a hammer or a sledgehammer, 
and there are a bunch of operations you can use with a set hammer either to make a shoulder where you need to have a a nice crisp transition between two flats or you can even use it as half of a shear because it's possible to cut stock when it's hot by having it stick out past the edge of the anvil and the set hammer is placed so that the uh, edge of the anvil and the edge of the set hammer line up and it'll actually shear when it's struck. Now, this is a flatter. That's not a hammer either. It's another tool that is set on top of the work and it has a wide flat surface so that you can take the hammer marks and irregularities out. So if you want to have a nice smooth forged finish, you can actually do that by doing the rough forging to shape and then using the flatter, striking that, to take out the little ripples and hammer marks. Okay, I guess that's enough for now because I, I figure about five or six minutes is as much as I should throw at you at one time. But you're starting to get an idea of what some of these tools are called and what they're used for. There'll be more as we go along, and I will get some hot work in to actually show you how some of these tools get used. That's coming up pretty soon. Bye.